Hey guys, I'm back. So, sorry for having no makeup on and just kind of looking rough in the state that I am. It's because it's the end of the night. It's actually midnight, um, but I've compiled a master list of products. This is more of like a bag of empties, emphasis on raves and rejects because a lot of these products tend to fall in one category or another and, and I wanted to just record it real quick and get it up for you and I figured you wouldn't mind if I had no makeup on. Um, I have some pretty great stuff and pretty not so great stuff to talk in here about today um, so if you want to hear my thoughts on a pretty wide variety of products I've got some skincare, I've got some makeup, um, I've even, I don't know, I just high-end drugstore like it's a little bit of everything so if you want to hear my thoughts on these just keep on watching so to start off my master list of products here I wanted to start with a skincare item that I have gone through quite a few bottles of um, it is the Nivea in the shower body lotion now this comes in like three different categories of the product um, this one right here is actually the one for very dry skin but I have tried the one that's just for normal to dry and normal skin um, I haven't tried the one for normal skin because my body skin especially around like my legs and my elbows tends to run really dry um, the normal to dry one has more of a purpley blue packaging whereas the very dry one is straight blue I will say I do notice a difference in the level of hydration the very dry skin one tends to last a little longer like you can kind of, your skin feels more hydrated longer throughout the day than the normal to dry one um, so to start you get 13.5 ounces in this puppy and it says moisturizes instantly no sticky feel um, I can definitely attest to that it doesn't feel sticky you do feel hydrated when you get out of the shower but not like how you have to wait with lotion you know like when you're sitting on your bed and your arms are up like this and you're just like I can't touch anything and I can't move for like five minutes for it to sit there and absorb you don't have that with this which is why I think I like it so much it's very instant very quick I don't have to really think about it I just do it with the rest of my shower routine get out and get dressed I don't have to sit there and wait for it to dry like I do lotion um, I usually get this at Target or CVS um, but from my notes at Walmart you can pick this up for $5.48 which means you're paying roughly 41 cents per ounce of product which in my opinion is really cheap for a thing of lotion especially because since I only use this in the shower it's not like I'm using it necessarily every day I'm in the shower probably more like every other day um, a little goes a long way and it takes me forever <laughs> to get through one of these bottles which I think is why I've only tried the normal to dry and very dry skin because it takes a long time to get through this um, it, like I said, it does have three different levels of hydration. Um, you can pick up one of each. Um, they all three do have almond oil in them. This one specifically says almond oil on the front. It also is good for sensitive skin. Um, it, the product itself, it has like a snap-on lid. And I haven't, I've had this fall in the shower a few times and never had it open up on me or anything, which is also, I think, a good thing packaging-wise. And the bottle itself is pretty easy to squeeze. It's not too firm. Um, but if you look at the product, like I'm just, I don't know if this is a really, this could be a really bad idea what I'm doing right now. But anyway, I'm trying to just get a little bit of it out to show you. This might take a moment, holy crap. Okay, yeah, this was almost empty. Ha, it falls in the empties category. But anyway, it's just like a white lotion. Like it's very light. Like you can see, it almost pretty much absorbed on my hand just then without needing too much to rub in or anything. It does have a pretty strong floral scent if you're not into scents, um, but honestly it doesn't really bother me that much. I honestly didn't even know it had a scent until I just sat here and smelled it because I guess in the shower it's a little bit harder to smell that smell. But yeah, so that's the Nivea in the shower body lotion. This definitely falls in a rave category versus a reject. So if you're in the market for a new lotion and are tired of sitting like this on the edge of your bed before you get dressed, I highly recommend checking this out. So the next product that I really want to talk to you guys about um, falls in the makeup category. It is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Makeup Extender Setting Spray. You get 3.4 ounces in this, which is pretty standard, and you can pick it up at Walmart for $13.66, which 
in my opinion is a little high it actually um, took me a while to purchase this one I waited and I got it at CVS and I waited till I had a coupon because I was like do I really want to spend that much on a drugstore setting spray and this was one of I think the first like mainstream drugstore setting sprays like it's the first one I think that ever caught my eye in like walking around in the store I had this big display and none of the other brands had really done that for a setting spray yet so I think that's why this got so much hype at first um, but beyond that, I don't know why it got the hype. Um, I guess you'll say this is my first reject of the group. Um, this, <laughs> I don't want to sound too harsh, but this did nothing for my makeup. I mean, nothing. It didn't extend the wear. It it just felt like I misted my face for no reason and moved on throughout the day. Um, another thing, I said the word mist. This doesn't really mist. This is a super soaker for your face. When it's full of product, like... No matter how far away I held it, like out to here, or no matter how, like, even if I tried to do only like a half a pump instead of like a full pump, it would not mist out. It would just <laughs> spray out. Um, it does have a pretty strong scent too when it sprays out like that, so you're just like, oh my god, like, I didn't expect that. It's like, is this gonna smudge my eyeshadow or something? Because it, it it's a heavy spray. <laughs> it's a super soaker makeup product. It is not a, not a light mist by any means, which it should be. It should be more of a fine aerosol mist, you know? Yeah, you, you don't get that with this at all. The only time I noticed it started to like, actually mist out instead of on my face was when I got to like less than halfway down. I don't know if it's because the little like, you know, the little stem, this little stem thingy. I don't know if it's because it like can't reach all the way down or what. But that's when I noticed I would get an actual mist instead of, you know, a hurricane on my face. So... There is that about the product. That's probably my biggest complaint and probably the main reason it's a reject. Um, but it also feels sticky. Like when it would settle on my face, like I even tried different ways of like angling it to mist it on my arm when I first got it. And I noticed even on my arm, it felt sticky. Um, and when I used it on my face, unfortunately it felt the same way. So yeah, this is just, this is a no-go. I will never be repurchasing this again. I'm glad I could review it for you guys. But for me, it's a hard pass personally. I, I'm not into it. The next product I have, it's not really a rave, and it's not really a reject, it's, I, I'm actually very conflicted on this product, I, I, I don't know, I haven't, it's so hard, and I'll explain why, it's so hard to come up with a definitive opinion, but it is the number 7 Stay Perfect um, Foundation, number 7 Cosmetics Stay Perfect Foundation, I picked this up at Target, which as far as I know is the only local place you can get it, um, it's like a Boots product, so when Target and Boots, the British brand, did that like partnering thing, this came to be in the States, so I was super excited about that, I've tried many things from this brand and loved it, and finally I splurged and bought the foundation, now the foundation itself, let's see, it is $15.99 at Target. You do get one fluid ounce, which is standard. I do not like that it used the word hypoallergenic on the bottle. I don't know if the standard is the same in the UK, but here you do know hypoallergenic is actually a made-up word. It's meant to mean for sensitive skin, but the term itself is not a scientific term. It has no legitimacy. And products here in the U.S. use it too, and that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I hate it when products use that word. Like, in my head, I know it means for sensitive skin, but it doesn't... It's not a scientifically founded word. As a biology major, that word does not exist. It is not a thing. You don't see it on, you know, actual medicines or anything like that, um, you know, medical things. I don't know. It's just, I know that's like a weird side rant, but I hate that word. So I don't like that it used the word hypoallergenic right here on the bottle. However, there are some pros to this besides the wording, which I just kind of look over the wording nowadays in my head. I'm like, okay, they mean for sensitive skin, even though that is not a term. It's it's not a term. I'm going to be editing some of this out, but that's not a term. So besides the word, um, this foundation, when I first started using it, it had a finish that was very similar um, to the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. If any of you have ever tried that, it had the same like demi matte finish. So it wasn't straight matte and it wasn't super dewy. It wore very well on my skin. It blended out effortlessly. It was just, it was amazing. Like, I thought I had found my new favorite drugstore foundation. Um, and on top of all that, just like the Makeup Forever one, when you take off the lid, it does have a pump. It pumps out, which I like because then I control, can control easier how much product I'm using, you know? So, I don't know. Like, I thought this was going to be it. And then I used it for probably about two months. 
and the consistency completely changed. I don't know what it was. I thought it was my skin. And then I realized, no, it's just every time I happen to use this foundation, it it started to like settle more and crease like crease like a mofo. Like every fine line, every wrinkle, every dry patch started to be emphasized. It was so bad. And it, it didn't wear long at all. It was just kind of like crumbly cake up. And it never did that to me before. And I didn't switch setting powders or anything. I was using the same routine. Like I said, I'd had it two months, maybe even a little less. Um, so I attributed it to something maybe going bad in the foundation. Um, I remember on the box it did say I had a shelf life, but I was way below that. So I don't know if maybe I just got a bad one. Maybe it got too hot in my room somehow. I don't know. I've never had a foundation just literally turn on me like that. It was a complete 180 from the initial experience that I had with it. <sighs> On the bright side, by chance, if I did get a bad one, if you guys want to know some of the pros of this, it does have sunscreen in it, SPF 15, which I love having SPF in my makeup products. That way I don't have to worry about it as an initial step at first. I can just reapply later throughout the day. So I highly appreciate any skin benefits that can be put into makeup. Kind of like bridging the skincare and makeup world. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. So that's great. Um, it does say it's for all skin types, medium coverage, which again is kind of like the Makeup Forever one, medium to buildable coverage, same thing. Like literally, you'd think this came from the same building that the Makeup Forever one was made in. Um, it did have quite a big shade range for the drugstore. Um, I did notice one thing, it does say all day wear on the front. I'm waving it out here, that, that's no, that doesn't help us, Brittany. Anyway, it does say all day wear on the front of the bottle, but if you look on the back, it specifically says 17 hour wear, but it also says it's supposed to be weatherproof and transfer proof, which I will say at first it met all of those things, but then once the formula changed, this, all of this just went downhill and I completely stopped using it. So that's why it's an empty, even though it's not technically empty, I'm obviously not going to finish this bottle. I may repurchase it and do more of an in-depth review and wait past that you know, month and a half, month mark, and see if I get a different experience out of it. So, you know, judgment's being held on this one. Do with it what you will, um, but that was my experience. Okay, so the next product I have to talk about is actually by Wet n Wild. It is the Max Fanatic. Get it? Fanatic, because it's a cat eye mascara. Your lashes are supposed to fan out. I thought that was cute. Naming was cute, okay. And their packaging, as always, is on point. It's adorable with the purple packaging and the little, like, stripies on the top but that's about the only good thing I can say about it is the great packaging and the naming which Wet n Wild is kind of known for that anyway besides the point if you go and pick this up at Walmart today you'll be paying about four dollars and fifty eight cents for a total of 0 0.27 ounces that is how much you get in this however it doesn't matter even though it's affordable um, and the packaging is great and it's actually a super black mascara like super super black i had no problems with the color lightening or anything like that um it transfers like you wouldn't believe like i i can't even describe i do have really watery eyes compared to most people but this like by the end of the day i had like mascara flecks and little smudges all underneath my eyes and that just made my dark circles look like they were a permanently affixed to my face like it just emphasized all that darkness under there um I think it, the transferring mostly came from my top lashes and not from my bottom but either way I don't want that happening when I wear a mascara it wasn't advertised as waterproof I get that it was not advertised as waterproof at all however I've had non-waterproof mascaras from the drugstore transfer less than that like the max volume mascara from them it's in the pink packaging i think it's around five bucks i love that mascara that's one of my favorite drugstore mascaras which is why i wanted to try this one out um however i did not receive the same results um the wand on this one is also particularly difficult to use like if you look at the wand on this puppy let me try to zoom you in here real fast. Now that you can see this wand in action, if you look here at the top, you've got a whole bunch of really tiny bristles, which worked great for grabbing the lower lashes. However, if you look at the top, look at how wide the teeth are and how they taper down. From this angle, you can see that there's, it looks like there's only one row, but when I hold it this way, I'm not sure how well this is picking up on camera since I'm wearing a black shirt. That was a really bright idea. But if you look, there's like, two really big rows of those teeth and a huge huge space in between those rows so I don't know it 
it's just a weird shape and the two rows kind of fan out from each other they start to separate towards the end here and I just found that the shape of this was really hard to use on my upper lashes and grab anything without getting it all over my lid and making a complete mess even if I tried to like go over it and go over it really carefully these big teeth are just awkwardly shaped so was not a fan of the wand on this at all so that's the main reason why I didn't like this mascara was the wand. I, I don't get the point. It, it didn't work for me. Maybe if you have longer eyelashes than I do, it'll work for you. I don't know. But for my short, stubby lashes, even though I have a lot of them, they're short, this was not it. Not it at all. Hard pass. Most definitely in the reject pile. On the flip side, I do have another mascara to talk about in my Raves and Rejects, and it's actually the Benefit Roller Lash. I have the miniature size here, even though I have owned the full size in the past, um, but this one I did empty, so I thought this would be a good time to talk to you about it. This is my everyday mascara. I freaking love this mascara. It is worth every penny, like... I can't even, I know it's high end, it's by Benefit. The full size, the big one, um, is 24 ounce, 24 ounces, it's, the big one is $24, and this little one here is 12, and you, it's usually half the size, half the price, of course, I'm quoting these um, prices from Sephora.com on this one. The small one here does have 0.1 ounce, but honestly, this lasted me quite a long time, and I love the size of this for traveling my purse, so don't underestimate the minis, for sure. Um, I love reasons I love this mascara. There's a lot. It's a long list. I could probably devote a whole review to this. But anyway, in a nutshell, it holds curl like a dream. It makes my short little lashes hold their curl and look longer and more defined than they are with any other mascara. It separates every individual lash out on the top and the bottom, and I love that about it. It does have a curling agent in it, which is why it holds curl so well. So on some days, I won't even like use an eyelash curler. If I'm real lazy, I'll just go with this, and my lashes look like I curled them. Maybe not as good as if I'd used an actual curler, but pretty darn close, which for me, being the person that I am, I highly appreciate that. Um, also, this one on the downside, it does transfer a little bit, but it's not advertised as waterproof, so uh, I expect a little bit of transfer. However, it doesn't give me raccoon eyes, and it's usually like towards the very end of the day. So this has a long wear time before it starts to show signs of transferring down here. Um, I love the way it makes my lower lashes look, too. I don't know if I said that. It gives great definition to both the top and the bottom lashes. Let me zoom you guys in here on the wand. Okay, if we're going to be talking about the roller lash wand, here are the things you need to know. It does have a slight curve. The side I'm showing you on the top right now is the one that I prefer to use for my uppers. The bristles on the top of the curve are ever so slightly longer and they have just a little bit more spacing than these ones here on the underside of the curve. The underside of the curve I love to use for the base of my top lashes to really coat them and I also love to use it for my lower lashes because look at how small like seriously those teeth are. There's like no spacing between it. I love that the bristles do coat the entire wand if you do happen to turn it or twist it while you're using it. Um, I do kind of do a little shimmy when I like kind of like that when I put it on my lashes um, but it just gives such a nice even coat. No clumps at all perfect definition, very small petite wand that's great for precision, especially on those lower lashes. So that's what I love about the wand of this mascara. I also wanted to point out that this one does come in brown and in black, so for those of you that want more of a natural looking lash, um, you could always go for the brown option instead of the black. Um, I also wanted to say how I use this. I do use it on its own, I love it that way, but Another great way to use this is as a lash topper. So what I'll do is I'll put on one of those mascaras that's notoriously thickening, like meant to give volume to your lashes, like um, Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced, um, Clump Crusher by CoverGirl, or maybe, yeah, I think it's that one by CoverGirl, and then um, the Max Volume one is another good one that gives volume, the Wet n Wild one. And the fourth one that I love to use this with, actually my favorite combination to use this one with, is the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara because it's super black and super thickening. And then once that coat dries, I just take the this over and do a little coat and all this wand does is separate my lashes back out and give them a little bit more curl and hold because that first mascara I put on is so heavy a lot of times they will weigh my lashes down and I will lose curl so even though they're super black and make my lashes look thick this makes them look like individual lashes again that way you don't 
have the spider lash effect you know you look like you have three giant lashes and that's it <laughs> yeah this prevents that so if you have that problem with a lot of mascaras i highly recommend just picking up a little one of these and trying it out for that because it's great as a topper product i want to talk about is another foundation it's actually a maybelline foundation it is the super stay better skin foundation the skin transforming foundation is what it says on the label um i have mine in the shade um classic ivory shade 20 that's what i am in all the maybelline foundations I'm not going to lie, I, I personally am a really big fan of Maybelline's foundations. They probably are one of my most favorite foundation brands at the drugstore to use. Like, I like almost all of them that I've tried. I really liked this one's no exception. I do love that it also has SPF 15 in it. You can pick this up at Walmart for $9.98, so roughly $10 bucks for this at Walmart. And again, you get one fluid ounce. I will say this product does have Acetyl C, which is like... It's like an acne kind of fighting, blemish fighting thing. So if you're really sensitive to those kind of ingredients, I would not pick this one up. Um, I have gone through two different bottles of this. And I would say I don't really notice a difference in like breakouts and acne. But my breakouts are generally pretty mild. So maybe that's why. Not sure about that one. But along with being acne fighting, it is oil free, which I can appreciate. Because as you can see with my face with no makeup on and it's the end of the day, I'm quite shiny in this general vicinity of my face. I'm pretty, pretty shiny. So I appreciate products that don't have oil so I know it won't clog those pores and won't add to my shiny problem. This one again has more of a demi finish. Um, it's a little more full coverage than the number seven. Like I'd say this starts out at high medium and then with a good concealer or a couple layers you can build it to full. Um, it does have a pretty good shade range just like the rest of their foundation. I love that it has a pump. It did have a clear lid on it at one point but I lost that. That's the, probably the cheapest part of the packaging was that clear lid. I, I always lose that within a few days. So that's, you know, eh, neither here nor there but the rest of the packaging is great. Um, this also has a slightly dewy finish. I don't know if I said that. Not super dewy. A little more dewy than the number seven one. A little more dewy than Makeup Forever, but not insanely glowy. Like, if you put a good matte powder over it, you're fine. It has good all-day wear for me, um, at least a good eight hours. It normally doesn't break up on me um, before that. Probably in the rave pile, because like I said, for me to have gone through two bottles, that says something. So I highly recommend checking this guy out if you're in the market for a new summer foundation that doesn't feel heavy but still has moderately full coverage. I give this one a go. This product we're going to talk about today is the Maybelline Master Fix Setting Spray. This is the pretty much biggest rival comp competitor for the L'Oreal one that we talked about. Go figure. Um, however, this one has a much better mister on it than the L'Oreal one. This one actually felt like a fine mist. You can pick this up for $9.98 at Walmart and you get 3.4 fluid ounces which is roughly $2.98 an ounce. So again I feel like some of these are a little pricey for drugstore setting sprays but I digress. It does have a little bit of a floral scent to it like most Maybelline products that I've tried are scented so if you're very sensitive to those kind of things I would not pick this one up. It is somewhat sticky but not nearly as sticky as the L'Oreal one. I really did enjoy this one for like intensifying eyeshadows on the lid. Um, it was great for that however as a setting spray I didn't notice too much of a difference on my face or in the longevity of my makeup like it didn't really feel like anything so yeah there's that um maybe you guys will get more use out of it than me it could just be because i get super oily through here i don't know but personally it didn't do too much for me so i doubt i will be repurchasing this one the next product on our list i actually got in an ipsy bag and it is the youth thermal by avene it's a lotion micellar makeup remover that sounds kind of contradictory to me and i thought that when i first got it too but <laughs> here's what I think they were going for. It, it, it's primarily a micellar water. Uh, it's supposed to cleanse makeup off. I used it with like a cotton round. Like you can see I used about half the bottle. There's a reason this isn't an empty. It made my face feel really warm. I didn't like that. Also this is like one of the most oily micellar waters I've ever used. I think that's what they were going for when they say lotion. Like they meant it to hydrate. That's but but I think it backfired or something and gave me this really, really awful oily residue. Like my face felt so dirty after it was supposed to be clean and that didn't fade with time. I would end up rewashing my face with a makeup wipe. Um, 
so there's that I don't like that at all um, this is the whole brand is actually geared towards more sensitive skin which I can attest it didn't break me out or anything however it didn't do what it was supposed to do so for me anyways if this works for you or you have more sensitive skin and you're looking for more brands to try this might be a good option however for me personally I don't think it's really worth it um, the only place I could find it to purchase it online was their website and it was $18 for a 6.7 ounce bottle, so you know, standard cleanser, toner bottle, about yay big. Um, and that ends up being about $2.68 per ounce, so relatively cheap. However, I, I can't personally recommend this and say that I liked it. Uh, it was just so oily and greasy. It was awful. Awful, awful, awful. It was like, oh my god, my face is greasy like a mofo. This is ridiculous. So that's why you can see I probably only used it like three times. So, yeah, hard pass, reject, most definitely. The next product I have to talk to you about is from Ula Henriksen. It's in this little bottle right here. It's the Sheer Transformation Cream. Yeah, I said that right. It's the Sheer Transformation Face Cream. I, you think I'd know the name of this by now because this technically isn't an empty, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but I will say this is like my third bottle or jar. I've gone through like three of the 1.7 ounce jars of this stuff. Um, I love, 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 love this. Like, I can't say that enough. This is probably like the most important piece to me in my skincare routine. Um, so this might take a minute for me to get all the love out for this product. Um, it is a high-end product. I purchased it at Sephora for $38 for the 1.7 ounce, which is roughly $22.35, $22.35 for like Per ounce which I know that's high that's scary high but the cool thing about Sephora is you can go in and get samples and try things which is actually what I did before I purchased this guy and I fell in love with it I'll say after using this for I don't know probably about two weeks maybe even a little less than that like I hadn't been using it very long on my first jar I just noticed the biggest difference in my skin like it's really hard to explain but it's almost like I didn't realize my skin was dull before I started using this. This does have vitamin C in it which brightens your skin um, so I think that was what I was seeing was the effect of that vitamin C. It's a really good thing to wear under your makeup and to pair with sunscreen because it helps uh, protect against like pollutant damage in the air for the skin so it's like a protectant as well as a brightening repairing effect. Um, it is a moisturizer. This is a very very lightweight moisturizer though like it feels um, more fluffy. It feels more fluffy than your regular lotion moisturizer. It's also oil free so it doesn't again add to my problem and it absorbs really fast and very lightweight feeling so I don't feel heavy when I put it on under my makeup in the mornings. I do use this day and night though like a lot of times I'll use it both. Not always but I try to use it mostly in the morning but a lot of times I'll use it morning and night and I do put it on my face and I do take it down my neck like I probably put on a little more of this than I should. Like a little goes a long way and you can feel it but I love it and I feel pampered when I use it so I tend to like lather that shit on like it's on there you know like I don't want to miss a single spot um I did notice once I started using this for a while like I said it made my skin look way less dull and just more healthy and alive I started getting more compliments on my complexion which for me was like a super big deal because I have these really red cheeks and again occasional acne so for someone to say oh wow your skin looks so good I'm like oh my gosh I love you thank you that's like the biggest compliment you could ever give me and then I kind of freak out and like want to cry a little bit and have to hold it back they're happy tears but it's like oh my god you're awesome so I attribute that mostly to this I'm not gonna lie like I think that's what made my skin look healthier like I said and have like a natural little bit of a sheen just not dull and like all my little dry textured areas on my cheeks were smoothed out um another good thing is when I say vitamin C, I'm, I've been leery of vitamin C in the past because, like, I tried the Ulla Henriksen Truth Serum. That's, like, straight vitamin C, super concentrated. I actually tried that before this one, and it irritated my skin. Like, my skin was really red and just textured, and it was just, it was bothered, and I think that's because how potent that vitamin C is. So for me to find something like this that has vitamin C in it but it's a more sheer amount is perfect for my sensitive skin. Um, I did notice with the vitamin, I'm pretty sure it was the vitamin C in this anyway, even though it does also have vitamin C complex, licorice root, and pea extract. So whatever those other two ingredients do, they must be great because I like this stuff. 
But besides the point, I also think I started noticing the effects of that vitamin C on my freckles on my nose and primarily this really big age spot right under my eye. Like, I'm sure you guys can see. Um, I noticed that this spot started to lighten. This spot used to be very prominent, like a really dark freckle. And I, I hated when it popped up because it's right under my eye and I felt like no matter how much concealer I put on, you could still see it. But when I used this guy, it definitely started to lighten that spot, which again, I appreciate. I'm only 22. I don't really need age spots yet. We can hold those off for a few more years. So anything that helps. So yeah, if you have more oily skin and you're looking for something to just make your skin look more healthy and looking to even lighten dark spots or discoloration or just even want a really good high quality moisturizer that's lightweight to wear under your makeup, I highly recommend this. It does have a shelf life of six months, but I think it took me about two and a half months, maybe almost three months to get through my first jar. So you can eat as late if you use this daily, get through it in six months. So I highly recommend this. Um, like I can't recommend this enough. So if you're in the market for a new moisturizer, you're wanting to try something out, go into Sephora, get a sample of this puppy, and I promise, or I don't promise, but I really hope that you guys fall in love with it like I did because I don't think I'm going to be switching anytime soon, so you won't see too many different moisturizers in my empties videos, okay? So we will move on to the next product. The next product I have to talk about um, is definitely not a rave, it's a reject, and it's this Physician's Formula. It was part of a trio. They were Okay, you're not going to be able to see much product in this because it's actually broken, um, but there are three gel pencils, and they have, you know, a tip that you can kind of sharpen with a little built-in sharpener on the bottom, which is nice. Um, however, the built-in sharpener doesn't matter if the product sucks. <laughs> um, I might use that sharpener on something else, just keep it, you know, because most gel pencils are the same standard size, but these suck. Um, they're part of the Shimmer Strips line, so I had high hopes because a lot of people rave about the Shimmer Strips um, eyeshadows and highlighters. However, these guys don't get as much hype, and now I know why. They are awful. I can't describe. Like, I remember these were one of the first, like, gel pencil eyeliners I picked up from the drugstore, and I would try to use it in my waterliner right below, and it wouldn't write. Like, it wouldn't write at all, and I would, like, wipe it on my hand thinking maybe I got some foundation or something on it. No, these just don't write. They don't do their job. Like, it's, you had one job. One job to go on my upper line here and the bottom. That is it. You don't do that. None of them. They were all three like these nude colors because it's the nude strips line, but none of them even showed up. So not only was there no wear time once I did like fight this onto my water line, it just, it just disappeared like poof. Like, okay, I'm going to let you view this for a few minutes and then you're going to look and it's going to be gone. That was a waste of money. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel about these. Even though there's three in the pack, you think, oh, I'm getting a really good deal because let me tell you the price of these puppies. If you go to Walmart, you can get the pack of three for $8.99 and they're three different colors. So you're paying roughly $2.99 per eyeliner. But I've had, you know, the 99 cent wet and wild eyeliners that have more pigment and work better than these. Just saying. But you will have to tug to put it on. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like to tug and like really hardcore go at it, do not pick these up at all. Another thing that I hate about this product, besides the fact it doesn't work, duh, is the crappy packaging. Um, it looks all cute and stuff on the outside. It's like gray and has these like sparkles and a little gold band. Very sophisticated. Um, but the little twister thing in the first one of these eyeliners, this twister part on the first one I had, I think it was the brown, broke. Like I'd only used it maybe once or twice and it was making this kick, 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 kick noise like a little tick 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 every time I turned it and like the eyeliner would jump up and fall down and jump up and fall back down in there and I was like screw it I'm done I'm not fighting this so that was the first one to go in the trash um it like okay now it's not gonna do it because it's on camera but pretty much you'll be holding this and like accidentally tilt it and like look at that this just like comes out it literally just came out like I've had it fall out on me before like when I'm trying to use it it won't do it now that I have it on camera it's camera shy but I'm telling you it won't stay in its little holder and these little twisty things are obviously cheap because they make that awful ticking noise so wet and wild go back to the drawing board on these things redo a whole bunch of crap packaging formula all of it and then show me what you got 
The next product, I hate to say it, I feel like I'm going to be ending on a negative note because I think my last two products are, are pretty negative reviews, uh, but I did have some definite love, you know, love products in there today, um, will be, and I'm going to get so much shit for this, like there's no way to put it, you all are going to hate me for this. I hope I don't lose any followers because of what I'm about to say. Um, I'm just going to preface this by saying all of these are my personal opinion, just like everybody else's. I'm sorry, personal opinions are like an asshole. Everyone has it, okay? It's different from everybody else's. So what I'm about to say about this product may not apply to you and how you use it. That's great. I'm glad you love it. I'm glad it works for you because, quite frankly, this was a product I was so hyped up about and I wanted to love this so badly. Okay, I wanted to love it so bad. <laughs> and it's the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. You know, the one that kind of has taken over the interweb and now they've made blushes and I'm not trying those. And here's why. I first tried this and I was so excited and had such high expectations and it met those. Like, I mean, look at this. It's beautiful. The, it, the waves, it's beautiful. It still smells like freaking coconut. Like, oh my lord. It reminds me of, um... Like it's a dream, and the shade is a dream. Like, I'm kind of afraid to do this, but look. If I swatch it out, look at that shade. That is perfect for fair skin. It's like even more perfect than my Hula Butter Bronzer. Look at that. Look at it. But do you want to know why it's a reject? Um, it's a reject because I had an allergic reaction to this on my face. Yeah. Not just once, and I know it was this. No, it wasn't anything else I was trying new because I have tried this three times since I bought it a while back. Um, I'd wait a couple weeks and try it again, but everywhere I applied the bronzer, like around my forehead and here on my cheek, I got all of these little bumps and they were so irritated and like itchy. So it wasn't like zit breakout, it was like allergic reaction breakout. Obviously it's not worth that. And I'm telling you, I tried to make it work. I tried it three times. I thought maybe my skin was just having an off day. No. It wasn't. No, there is something in here. I tell you, it does not work for my sensitive skin. So if you have very sensitive skin, you might want to skip on this. However, it looks like a dream. It smells like a dream. It kind of is a dream in makeup form. So if it works for you, you have no idea how jealous I am of you right now. That's why this is a reject. It's not really a reject for any actual company reasons. It's just something in here does not agree with my skin at all. So. Like I said, if this works for you, that's great. I'm glad. I don't like it. We both have our opinions. Let's move on. So the second to last product that I'm going to talk to you about is by Biotanics. It's a skincare line. Um, I picked this up at Target. I think it was also part of the Boots overlap that we talked about earlier. Um, it's They were cleansing wipes and they're the power of plants, facial wipes. Um, they were supposed to be cleansing and brightening. I say supposed to because obviously this falls in the reject pile. Um, these are funky. These are really funky. There's 25 wipes in here. It really didn't take me that long to get through them. And you want to know why? They don't take makeup off. I swear, I had to use three of these every time I tried to use them to take my face makeup off. And I mean, I don't even wear like a whole lot of waterproof stuff. But dang, I mean, you cannot advertise on the front. It says cleanses and removes even waterproof makeup suitable for sensitive skin no 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 it did not remove makeup it was awful i ended up a lot of times going in with another cleanser after using this because this did shit it did nothing not a zip a zero not worth your money at all i did notice when i checked them out on uh, target's website to check the price though that they have repackaged don't be fooled do not be fooled the new packaging is like a pink and it still says brightening you know facial wipes or whatever so they're just trying to fool me into rebuying the same shitty product. I don't want to do that. So yeah. Besides the fact that they didn't take my makeup off, there's another reason I didn't like these. Their texture's weird. Their texture's really weird. I've used a lot of facial wipes. None like these. No, it's like, you know how regular facial wipes just feel kind of like wet cotton and they're really soft? This feels like cotton and really scratchy tissue paper woven in there. That That's how it feels. It's scratchy and it does not do a good job of getting makeup off and it kind of made my face feel raw after using it and I'm pretty sure it was just the texture. Um, they are $4.99 at Target for 25 wipes and they have a really strong scent. I also didn't notice any brightening properties which is what they're supposed to do and I did go through the whole package. I was committed. This package is empty. 
but it's not worth it and it doesn't take off your makeup so I'm gonna say this is a hard pass it's a hard reject the biotanics power of plants cleansing face wipes all bright version don't do it this is the Maybelline master precise eyeliner it is a felt tip eyeliner it's got like a super fine tip very super fine pointy tip Literally like the perfect felt tip size to like get in there and make those really tiny wings and little flicks right along the lash line. So I was super excited when I first opened this up to try it because of its shape. Um, it does retail for $7.62 at Walmart and you get 0.37 ounces of product in here. Find up in the shade black. Um, however, one of my downsides of this product and why it's a reject is because it's not a straight black. It's like... A charcoal black it goes on looking really dark and then as soon as the air hits it and it dries down it dries down to a gray I want when I buy a black eyeliner I want it to be black I mean black is my soul black <laughs> that is what I want um black is midnight but this one doesn't it is more of a gray um, I don't like that if I wanted a gray eyeliner or a charcoal liner or a black brown liner, I would go out and purchase those shades. I wouldn't purchase a black one to get a gray one. So that was my biggest con. I find myself, when I use this, having to go over it with some other eyeliner to make it look black. And that defeats the purpose. Like, I'm using, I only want to have to use one. I don't want to have to use two liquid eyeliners for a wing. This one gave me, like, the perfect shape, and then I noticed how it would dry down, and I'd have to get something that was darker. It's just, it's, no, waste of my time. No. Um, so there's that. I kind of washed away. Um, where my eyes might get watery sometimes, especially if my allergies were bad, I would avoid using this one because of that. Or I would go over top of it with a waterproof one because this did not last. Um, the color also isn't very buildable. You were talking about how it dries down. I mean, I would go over it two or three times with this to try to get it to look super black again. That doesn't help. Like, each layer would dry down and it would be the charcoal gray. So color is not buildable. It's not black. And it's not very long lasting because if you get even the slightest bit sweaty or watery eyes it comes off so i mean take it what you will it didn't work for me so it's a reject but if any of those things sound appealing for you you go right on ahead and you do you for me it didn't work however it's the last product in this video it ends on a sour note it ends on a reject i might have should have planned that better but that is my overall thoughts. We did have some winning products and we had some not so great products. Um, you guys can take my opinion for what you will. Um, I'm happy to have been able to do this review for you guys and test all these things out. If you have any like specific requests or any questions about the things that I used, uh, go ahead and comment down below. Also, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Of course, that means a lot to me and I greatly appreciate it. So I will see you guys next time here on YouTube land, and until then, I hope your evening is wonderful. Bye.